What are you doing? My Star Wars knowledge has always been there, but now it's awake. And I fear what I might become. You need a study partner. I can't help you. Why not? I've seen your daily routine. You're not busy. I came to the Schmodown to win. I intend to keep that belt. I'd rather not do this right now. Yeah, me too. You will bring Alex Damon's Star Wars belt to me. Nice try. You're not doing this. The effort would kill you. It's Zoom. It's not that hard. Can you see my surroundings? Yes, you have your webcam on. I can't see yours. Check the settings, old man. Why is Harloff connecting us, you and I? Because he wants me to beat you and move on in the tournament. Did Sean tell you what happened the day we played? Why did you GTE twice on your five-pointer? Give me an honest answer. I knew it was Dalte Dufine and I JT'd to be a jerk. You're a monster. Yes, I am a monster. I'm a sarlacc and I'm hungry. But you, you're just a little appetizer. You're, you're a weak way and I need something more substantial. I need me a Boba Fett. Oh man, he's trying for the belt. This can't go on forever. I thought this was going somewhere. I was wrong. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the movie trivia showdown. It's the Star Wars tournament, and we are here. I'm Christian Harloff, joined as always by my partner in crime, Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Mark, this is something, man. This is this is a hyped up match. Look at Adam the Razor Wit, who nobody knew how he was going to be at Star Wars, and he had that major five point pull against Sean Sullivan. He still lost the match, but it was a great match, and then. Magic. Molly Damon makes her return to the movie trivia showdown. Of course, the wife of the current longest reigning movie trivia showdown Star Wars champion, Alex the Demon Damon. But Molly has made it very clear she wants to be on her own here, doing her own thing. It's one of the re main reasons she joined Sam Levine and the usual suspects. She, it, it wasn't really a choice for her. I know that Roxy at one point wanted to have her on. I don't think she ever considered it. I think she always wanted to play with Sam. Sam was the one who made it clear that he thought everybody, including himself, were silly for not getting Molly in the first place and silly for not picking up Molly. And and I think that Sam at one point had said to me, I didn't even realize, you know, at the point I would have gone after her immediately. She would have been one of my first picks. And he was able to get her. Sam Levine, as much as people give him crap about, oh, he hasn't been around and this. And I know this fact it's due to his, his schedule and everything else. The guy is, has a sports mind and you can see it. And you look at what he's done in for free agency, picking up both Molly Damon, Doug Benson. Um, you look what he does for, for, does for Inner Geekdom. He's putting Janine and um, and both Jen Kemp in the IG. He he's done so much so far. And look at the big trade he got to get Ethan Irwin. I, so Sam Levine's playing the long game. We know this. And so to see what's going to happen now with the dungeon with Kaiser and with uh, Mr. Witt coming up, Mark, I'm pretty pumped. Yeah, and to anybody who may be newer to the Schmodown and joining us for one of their very first times, first of all, welcome all rookies. Uh, happy to have you all aboard this ship. And look, a manager, maybe they can't put new knowledge into their competitors' heads, but Christian, as we just saw with this last match between Demolanta and Scrimshaw, it is the narrowest of margins. So feeling comfortable and feeling appreciated and feeling like you're really a part of your faction and greater than just yourself, that it's the sum of all these parts adding up to something special, that means something. Thing, especially in these matches that could go to sudden death. All right, well, I can already see the competitors are ready. The managers are here. Mark, let's get going, my man. Do I have to say I'm ready again? Because it still Not carries yet. over. From last no, we're we're going to play a really uh, cool little thing. That we're gonna I'll play. say I'm ready, then. All right, you're ready. What are you doing? My Star Wars knowledge has always been there. But now it's awake, and I fear what I might become. I can't help you. I came to the Schmodown to win. 
I intend to keep that belt. <laughs> this is the match. This is the one I've been waiting for. So Sam Levine picking up a very strong competitor here. I was going hard to get her on The Usual Suspects because I firmly believe she is the top competitor pretty much next to Alex. That was me basically being like, I'm taking this belt yeah. from my husband. Yeah. Hello there. You got the wrong Damon, Bob. Adam Witt is hungry. He's ready to eat some younglings with a side of broccoli. I'm here to put the Star Wars champion back on notice. Adam Witt, that's a cute shirt. I hope that's not the only deep cut you know. I've been in this game a long time. I may have only competed once, but technically I've studied for seven matches. She has watched all the matches so far. I I'll just say I was very excited with today's match. Not oh. just for me. I'm sitting here playing chess. When this match is over, when this tournament is over, the only Damon people are gonna be talking about in the Star Wars League from now on, it's gonna be Molly Damon. Does Alex think the belt's safe because you're in the tournament? Not if anything to say about it, I have. Dolce Dauphine? I knew it was Dolce Dauphine and I jt to be a jerk. Overconfidence implies she's overestimating herself, and right. she's not. I've been in the shadows pulling the strings for too long. If you ever see Alex look to the side during one of his matches and smile, that's him thanking me for reminding him how many horns are on Darth Maul's head. His faith in his new apprentice? Misplaced, maybe. There's always a bigger fish, and that bigger fish is me. All right, Mark. I, I mean, it's again, props to Erica, the great nerd chronic for, I mean, I get so hyped watching this goosebumps and to see both of these competitors, they want it. And now, especially, I'm sure they were both watching that last match. At least you, you would assume that they're both watching that last match. And it makes me hyped because they're like, okay, that's the competition. That, that's who I'm playing next. I'm playing Andrew Dimolanta because Andrew Dimolanta had to turn some heads with that performance. But if you're Molly Damon or Adam Witt, and you did just as well. You're like, yeah, all right, let's do it. Hey, you know, Christian, uh, you haven't been out of stand-up comedy that long to forget the fact that when you are about to go up and you see someone on stage before you crush, it elevates your game. Or it might shrink your game depending right. on your experience level. So I think that them watching what just went down, maybe one of them gets energized and says, it's, it's go time right now, game time who? And the other one, maybe they shrink a little bit. We're about to find out. But given those promos, I'd say Adam with a nickname like the Razor, of course he's ready. And did you see how Magic Molly looked when she was doing the evil ray from rise of skywalker that's i mean that is scary stuff she's one of the more anticipated um competitors that we have i mean because everything she just said in that promo she's been working with alex damon and, and you see what alex damon has done he's the longest reigning most dominant champion we've ever had and she's been in his corner since day one uh so it's she knows you assume what, what he knows so let's let's see let's see how that pans out but I want to get to the standings here because if you look at the standings once again now that we know the finstock exchange picks up those big points there um this is really a, a battle between the usual suspects in the dungeon to get out of last place you have the usual suspects with four points the dungeon with four points they both need this and they both need it bad whoever wins this match um it allows them to start putting up that fight and it'll it'll catapult them into fourth place um with with a win so this is a big, massive match for both of these factions, and especially after the fact that the Finstock Exchange now built up a couple more points there, Mark. Yeah, that's right. I mean, look, if you're a Star Wars fan, you care about the trivia, but any fan or purveyor or somebody who's ever seen a sport, if you have the opportunity on the line to go from ninth place, potentially, or eighth, to number four in the standings, that is monstrous, and that is must-see TV or in this case, internet. Yeah, that's right. Either one of these teams will be in fourth place by the end of this match. The question, who will it be? Well, to find out how they feel about it, we're gonna bring in the manager of the dungeon, 
Kaiser and the manager of the usual suspects, the inglorious one, the Hall of Famer, the former singles champion, former teams champion, the great and glorious bastard himself, the inglorious one, Sam Levine. You sure you don't want to take six or seven minutes to give him another introduction? I mean, did you, did you get every accolade in there you could, Harloff? I think yeah. you earned it. I don't know what you've earned Thank yet. Thank you very much. We didn't even talk about my time on uh, That's So Raven. That's right. And we, well, that was my next question, Sam. So during your time, uh, no. Uh, look, let's let's start with you. You know, j- just to make you feel better, Kaiser. We're going to start with Sam. All right, Sam. So, um, look, I-, I said it up top here. Kaiser is taking shots. Kate is taking shots about the schedule mm-hmm. and everything too. Clearly, I, I mean, this, the reason you took this gig in the first place is the fact that you were going to make moves. You did make moves. You got yourself Ethan Irwin. You picked up Molly Damon. Uh, so tell me about Molly Damon. What was was the choice always to go after Molly? Was that one of the first choices during free agency? The minute I learned that she was not attached to uh, uh, a faction, I said, how do we get her? I, I want her playing with the usual suspects. She's going to be an absolute beast. I It was totally my fault for misunderstanding a draft day. I thought someone had picked her up in one of the later rounds after we were the live stage show. And so that was months, you know, like two months that I thought she was playing with someone else's faction. And then uh, when I learned that she was available and that free agency was going to be a thing, I pushed hard because she is going to be an absolute terror in the Star Wars division. Kaiser, look, you've been pushing Adam. You 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 chose Adam during the draft, confident in Adam during the draft. You put him in the Star Wars division. He had a great fight against Sean Sullivan. So how's he feeling? How are you feeling about him going up about, uh, against the inglorious one over here? And, of course, Magic Molly Damon. I've never felt better about Wit. Uh Wit's game. He he's been training in the dungeon every night with the boys. Um, we've been running serious drills. The guy's gonna be a, a absolute fireball today. You know, <clears throat> come out and I don't know which one of you said Sam has a great sports brain. I don't know what he's ever proved. I mean, I guess if you're, if you're playing a pickup game of uh, square ball with the cast of Family Ties, maybe you want him there to help you out with that. You know, maybe pickup game of kickball. I don't know, but I've never seen him do anything in this league. One of my favorite actors, Bad Manager. All right, wow. well, shout out to play there. Go ahead, wow. Yeah, Christian, the, the words are flying fast and furious here between the two managers. So I'll just tidy things up by saying, look, Kaiser, I know you don't want to hear any more of Sam's credit, so I'll ask you the question. As a freak, a geek, and a member of a modern family, how has Adam been training for this? Because we know Molly gets to train virtually all the time. So can you give us any specifics as far as the drill that you were running with Adam to get him prepped to go against Sam's competitor? Well, I don't believe she's training all the time. I mean, the minute Alex opens up his mouth, I'm falling asleep. So I'm sure she's gonna she's gonna follow suit. Guy doesn't really have much to offer. Uh, good good sport. Good good Star Wars brain. But uh, I don't know that he's a real champion. I think Adam Witt is your next Star Wars champion. He's gonna prove it. He's gonna run through this tournament. You ba- I've never seen anything like the level the dungeon's playing at. And I give a lot of that credit to Kevin Smets because he's taken on the role of a of a, of a coach the last couple weeks because. We're waiting for him to play against uh, the kid who works at PetSmart, Chandru. So, you know, eventually we'll get a piece of him. But but I give a lot of credit to Smets for getting zipper ready, Parker ready. And most importantly, he's Witt was beating Smets all, all of last night in our training session. So I feel good about where he's at. All right. Kaiser yeah. might be a manager to teach him how to hold a sword. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it could be. I think you're doing that a little wrong. But that's, hey, that's what are you all. talking about. I'm like, I'm like Kane. I walk the earth. That's fine. <laughs> Kaiser, yeah. did somebody kick you out of the house? What, why are you not? I don't even understand. You're throwing shade at me. Where's what do you mean, did somebody kick me out of that? What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I, know. I, I think it's I've been kicked out of a lot of places. I've been kicked out of a lot of places, including my own house. So anything's possible. I think your own pig picked you out of the house. Well, look, uh, it, it is a, uh, it's a battle here because, like I said beforehand, guys, this is the winner finds himself catapulted into fourth. The loser stays in dead last here. So this is a big, big match between both you guys. I wish you good luck. Well, Sam, good luck. All right. See you later, guys. <laughs> it's, can we give them their own sitcom on Quibi? I, I, maybe. Uh, or Mark, so the managers have spoken. Now it is time for the players to make it into the arena. But are you ready? As you wish. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, 
Representing the usual suspects with a record of zero wins, one defeat. She is Magic Molly Damon. Magic Molly Damon, you have made it back to the Schmodown. Look, you and I have, we talked in the beginning of, of the year, we talked last year, and there was a little bit of hesitance at first to return, but then I haven't really talked to you about this um, at, at all, and I'm so curious to hear it. There was like, sometimes, you know, when I, and I'll call a competitor and I'll ask them if they're interested in coming back. It's like, I don't know, maybe, I'm not sure. It was almost like you were knocking down the door. Um, something happened where it all changed and you wanted back and wanted back in a bad way. What changed? I don't know. Something just clicked in my brain, I think. Um, you know, we do all these other trivia things. We do trivia Dragon Con and I got close to winning that. So I was like, hey, uh, I think it's my time. Molly, has there been any discussion between you and your counterpart as to what could happen should you win this match and then a couple more matches down the road? You see where I'm getting here. Uh, I mean, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He knows who's going to win. Wow. I love it. I love the confidence. It's it's a pleasure to have you back. I'm so glad that you're back and I'm looking forward to seeing the match here. I'm going to put you in the waiting room until we bring your opponent in here. Thank you, Molly. All right. magazines to read in that green room. And her opponent. <laughs> Representing Ow. the dungeon. With a record of zero wins and one defeat in the Star Wars division. He is Adam the Razor Wit. Adam the Razor Wit. It's a pleasure to have you back, my friend. How are you doing? This has been uh, is there's been a lot of hype so far in this match. Molly Damon obviously getting a lot of attention here, but you have also gotten a lot of attention from that great five pointer. You didn't win the last match, but you did put up a fight maybe so maybe people didn't know how you were going to be how are you feeling going into this one oh, i feel great i've actually <clears throat> had time to you know study and that sort of stuff we had kind of had short notice on that last thing so i was pretty confidence inducing in fact in the fact that i only missed a couple and i really kind of just got called that day to come in which now that we've all been home and everything i'm glad we said yes and went in and played that that was good so i'm feeling good i'm i'm excited i'm, I'm here talking about star wars everything you know, they call it studying, but I call it watching Star Wars movies because I used to get in trouble in school for not studying and instead watching Star Wars movies. And I feel that society has reversed and vindicated all of those choices now. So thank you. Yeah, uh, Adam, uh, first of all, congrats on having as many clocks in your room as Doc Brown. Um, <laughs> I, I you, if you go back and you think about it, I mean, you're, you know, I don't want to call you an elder statesman, but you got some experience on you. So where were you when the prequels came out? And did you ever think that, hey, one day I'm going to have to answer a lot of correct trivia questions about these movies I'm waiting in line to go see? I never thought it would come in handy. I, I, I really thought it was something I was just doing out of a labor of love. And, and you guys know every once in a while in your life, you meet other people that are as obsessive about it. And of course, there was an atomic explosion when I met the Schmodown of people that could actually talk about this stuff. And that's, uh, but uh, no, at, at, I mean, of, of course, you know, I was there opening day. I waited in line, all that sort of stuff. And as far as I knew, that was the last Star Wars movie we were ever going to get. <laughs> well. Well, fast forward now. Not only do we have more movies and more TV shows, and now we have the Star Wars Schmodown, and this is the tournament. This is the first round, and we now bring back Molly Damon here. We have Adam the the laser wit. Okay, with the laser today. I see. I see what you're doing. I see what you did there. I see, see what I did there. Thank you. See, that's why I like you, Christian. You could see what I did there. Sometimes. All right. So I would like to say thank you to both. Uh, both of you to be here right now, but I also like to thank Mark Ellis as he is now going to have the rules of round number one. 
It's my pleasure, Christian, because I get to hear this warm Vermont maple syrup voice some more. In round number one, competitors, you're going to hear 10 questions from 10 different corners of movie, trivia, schmodown, Star Wars, galactic know-how. Each question's worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing, at least not in round number one. Like I said, each question is worth one point. As soon as we ask it, please write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever utensil you have handy on whatever tablet you have provided for yourself. Once we ask you by name or nickname or nickname altered to fit Star Wars, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbally answer into your microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match named for famed Dagobah resident JTE, if you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be issued by your manager at any point throughout the three-round match. And uh, Christian, as we saw in the last contest, these matches don't necessarily just go three rounds, and the competitors can say, hey, I think I want to challenge that, and then have the dialogue before the challenge is officially issued by their manager. Now, a few things, guys. I know that you've been uh, told this before the match. Make sure, please, that you have on the private chat. That is how you will be able to talk to your managers. And we do not want, even though the, the audience knows not to share any answers, because if they do share answers in the comments, they'll be removed. But do not, the only way to, to talk to your manager is through the private chat, please. And after you write down your question and during round two and round three, please make sure that your hands are visible during the match. All right. So with that, I ask Molly, are you ready? I am ready. I ask Adam, are you ready? Is the answer you were looking for a twin pod cloud car pilot? Well, I'll take that as you're ready. Then let's get ready to schmodown. All right, everybody. Round number one. Question number one. Here we go. We start with Revenge of the Sith is the first question. Who says... I sense great fear in you, Skywalker. You have hate, you have anger, but you don't use them. Uh, Christian, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you go to Comic-Con in 2005 to watch Revenge of the Sith footage? Um, it was there for the title. Four, 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 five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, and Molly. Count Dooku. Yes, and Adam. Count Dooku. One, one, Mark, next question. He's got a funny name. Your next category is in The Force Awakens, Episode 7. And the query is, how long has Maz Kanata run her watering hole on the planet Tokadana? Bless you. <laughs> I would love to go to that watering hole. It looks like a lot of fun. And, Probably gonna fight. Yeah, you'll get no fight. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Adam. Over a thousand years? Um. Yes. All right. That's that is correct. And Molly. Thousand years. Oh. All right. So let's. So wait. So Sam's. Sam, yeah. you're coming in to challenge that. Yeah. I I just saw something fairly recently about something having to be very specific. So I'm gonna go ahead and challenge that. The Too many words on my board. I got it. Give me your full. Give me your full challenge. I think you understand my full challenge. I need, but you I need. were looking for a specific number, not any number over a thousand years. Okay, so did I not know the answer? Is that that what we're saying? We're saying I did not know that answer. That no, I did. No, no. Not what I'm saying. I'm saying that apparently specificity is very important in this league. I'm hearing that I didn't know the answer. Just didn't even know it. Cool. All right, here we go. So, so we're gonna we're going to give me a second. We're gonna challenge right away. With Sam Levine, not surprising, but I understand the challenge. All right, so let's uh, we'll we'll be right back. We have talked to both the writer and we've talked to Mark Ellis. We've talked through it and we are going to say that Sam Levine's challenge is withheld. The answer was upheld. It's not over a thousand years. So, so Molly Damon will get that point there. Adam Witt will not. All right. So we're going to put you guys back in there. And because of that, Molly will still keep her challenge, but the, it will be two to one, two to one. Damon over wit so far two to one next question and we have are you guys both ready so, so start with molly you ready yes yeah. and mm -hmm. oh, let me do this again sorry 
Got to get them in order. There we go. All right, here we go. All right, here's the next question for question number three. The Empire Strikes Back. What did the rebels on Hoth reroute all power into when they detect Darth Vader's fleet? That was a good deep breath into that microphone, Christian. That, that was Roka level. Yeah, I just, you know, it's like you have to. This is why Sam's a good manager, though. You have to be prepared for a lot of challenges. Yeah, but, but, it, 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 but they're also not to be not used. Oh, four. He should have used it. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Molly. Shield generator. Shield generator, yes. And uh, sorry, Adam. Deflector shield. Shield is correct. So we're going to go energy, energy Challenge. shield. Challenge. En- energy shield, planetary shield. Yeah, but they didn't. The, the line is not what Molly just answered. The line we're looking for. Hate to do this, but it's not. <laughs> All right, let's bring in the manager. I don't think the line is what we see if Kaiser wants to answer. Kaiser, do you want to challenge it? We're going to challenge that. <laughs> right off the bat. Here we go. Hey, getting these out of the way early. <laughs> oh, maybe we will, maybe we won't. It's not the line. It is. All right. No, for nothing, you never even explained. What you it, just said you just it, the other kid's challenge was upheld. No challenge? one even gave me a, a, a reason why that I was the gone. Reason why I you didn't? Well, you're, if you had something in your ears, that's something else. We clearly said the reason why is because the line was thousand years and not an over thousand years. So what's the line here? Then. So what's the line here? What is your what is your challenge here, Adam? Full challenge. The line is switch uh, all power to the deflectors. The line is what it says to do is not. Def- is not divert power to the shield gener- uh, shield generator. I think it's a deflector shield. But okay. did you ask, was the question about a specific line? Well, I, the question was, what did the rebels on Hoth reroute all power into when they detect Darth Vader's fleet? It wasn't a specific line. It was what did rebels on Hoth reroute all power into when they detect Darth Vader's fleet? Right. Well, and just before we go uh, mute our mics and go to the challenge graphic, can I get uh, one more time Molly and Adam's original response to the question so we have it on, on file? Molly? Uh, I Sorry. erased it, but it was shield generator. Deflector okay. shield is mine. And Adam said de- deflector shield. Okay. Shield. We will be right back. All right. Here we go. All right, we're coming back here now. All right, Mark, uh, we have we've talked, we've had the conversation, and now we will have the ruling. Mark, go ahead. That's right. As you look at this beautiful cityscape behind me, I'm going to say that's Coruscant. Uh, we have come up with a ruling. The challenge is upheld in that Molly did not have the correct answer. However, Adam Witt did also not have the correct answer. We were looking for energy shield. And so while Adam and Kaiser do retain the challenge, so they, they keep their challenge. So each team still has one challenge left, but no points are awarded either way. So we can now continue with the third question. Um, Christian, this really has an impact simply because now there's no perfect round ability for the competitors. Yeah, at the end of it so far, so this is the fourth question and it's two to one. Molly has the lead as we get to question four. Mark, question four. Oh, happy to read it. All right. Let the controversy continue with the Phantom Menace. This is your next category. Who did Anakin and Shmi belong to before they became the property of Watto? Watch this real-time magic, Christian. You ready? Nice. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Adam Witt. Gardula the Hutt. That is correct. Molly. Gardula the Hutt. Three to two. Damon holds her lead. As we get to our next question here, Rogue One. Before entering Jetta City, Jin told Cassian that they should leave K2SO behind, except she referred to K2 as something else. What did she call him? All right. Hey, Christian, we got through a question. Don't jinx it. I'm just saying we got through one. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Adam, pens down. And Molly? Target practice. Yes. And Adam? Target practice. You got it. Okay. So he had it. He had it, Sam. I see you making your face. I looked at the E. He's got it. Um, 
So target practice it is. That is correct. Four, three. All right. Next question. Next question is in the world of Return of the Jedi. And your question for Molly and Adam. How many Ewoks helped Chewie commandeer an Imperial Walker? Ah, do love this scene. This, this entire battle is just so well done. Yeah, it is a good one. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and Adam. Two. Yes, Molly. Two. There we have it. Five, four. Molly Damon keeping her one point lead. Excuse me, four, three. Molly keeping her one point lead. Or five, four. <laughs> keeping her one point lead. Here's our next I one. I challenge, Christian. Let me We've five, rattled everyone. <laughs> yeah, five, four. Here's the next question. The Rise of Skywalker. The Rise of Skywalker is the next question. Who rescues Ray and the others on Pasana when they are found by a stormtrooper during the festival? All right. How many how many Ewoks do you think it takes to to defeat one Wookiee? Is the question, Christian? Uh, a ton. Say four. Yeah, maybe more. Five, Eight, four, seven, three, two, two, one. Pens down, Molly. Lando. Yes, and Adam. He's not a system. He's a man. That is true. Uh, we see our first. six five six five. Okay, here we go. Yes, it is. Your next question is in the world of Attack of the Clones, Episode 2, and the query therein. Who interrupts Shmi Skywalker's funeral with an urgent message? Now, I do like this question. I got to tell you. You think it's pretty unchallengeable or just because you like the question? Both. (laughs) Oh, boy. Four, three, two, one. Pens down please and we start with adam c3po that is incorrect molly r2d2 that is correct molly sees herself with another point there uh, here we go yes I, i'm saying c3po interrupts with a message from r2d2 right is that your challenge yeah that's my challenge because like hold on well you can't you can you um, kaiser yeah we're gonna challenge that what, what was the question again? I guess before I challenge. Well, no, you've you've already had a challenge. You're challenging it in there, and I can I'll, I'll tell you if you, if you're going to challenge it, you do you have challenged. Yeah. We're gonna, we're, all right, here we go. So we're going. Feel good about it. We're going. We're going. About it. All right, we're going back. We're going. We're gonna. We'll go. Good call, Wit. Good call, Cuz. Sorry, but I got to do it. Challenge again, and we'll be right back. Coming back, coming back, coming back. All right. Here we go. So now we bring in both uh, Molly Damon, Adam Witt. So we spoke to the writer who watched this scene when he last night when he watched when he wrote the question. C3P was there the entire time. R2D2 is not there, and then he interrupts. So R2D2 does interrupt. R2D2 is the correct answer. Molly Damon keeps the point, and now the dungeon and Adam Witt have lost their only challenge. The audience is so happy <laughs> and there was much rejoicing but but to be fair it was a good challenge and and the and the writers have again confirmed it so there we go so now we get to our next question next question um here we go and the question is has, was asked a long time ago all right so let's not have that conversation all over again so let should this let everybody know that questions from previous seasons can appear in uh, in this match so just just, we're all good, Christian. We're all clear now. We're all fine here now. How are you? How are you? We'll find out. So, Molly, even if something's correct, please challenge it um, so we can overrule. All right. <laughs> here we go. All right, next next question. I'm kidding. That question was uh, R2-D2 was the answer. All right, here we go. Next question. The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. What color is the plume blum la- lapel of the master code breaker that Maz sends Finn and Rose to find. What color is the plume bloom lapel of the master code breaker that Maz sends Finn and Rose to find? I'm gonna challenge that, Christian. It's plum bloom. Whatever. There you go. <laughs> there. Uh, Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Molly. Red. Yes, and Adam? Red. 
It is true. Somehow, you guys, this is a longer match than the previous match. All right, here we go. <laughs> so, and we're in round one. All right. <laughs> here we go. Mark, last question in this round. Whoa, really? Okay. This is your last question in round number one, and it's in the category of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. And the question, what kind of creatures do we see stormtroopers ride on Tatooine in A New Hope? And then the announcers rest. Can't hear a, there we go. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Adam. You're back. Yes. And Molly. Do backs. Yes. Okay. So at the end of that round, we got there, ladies and gentlemen. It is now nine seven. Nine seven as we find ourselves with Molly Damon missing one, two points here over Adam Witt. So now we will drop out Adam for a moment and we're going to read the rules first around number two. Mark, how does it go? That's right, round number two, in which the usual suspects still have one challenge to be used, and they also get first spin at the wheel. If that's what they want to elect to do, you can also defer to your opponent. Once you do finally settle on a wheel category, you're going to be asked five questions in that world. Each question's worth two points. There is no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, feel free to ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Uh, keep in mind, competitors, your usages of the JTE rules still remain. So, Christian, it's really Molly's game at this point. Does she want to go ahead and spin or defer to Adam the Razor slash Laser? Molly and Sam, how are you all feeling? Well, we're going to give you guys 60 seconds to talk it out here, Sam, starting oh, now. 60 whole seconds. <laughs> oh, we got 60 seconds. We can kick back and relax. We can um, talk about I anything. I tell you how proud I am of you for maintaining your composure. That was what I will certainly go down in history as one of the most controversial first rounds uh, of any match we've ever had. But you handle it like a pro. I'm very glad that our challenge was upheld. Um, I respect the other side for making that challenge in the middle. And as it turned out, it would have gone either way. Either both of you would have been correct or both of you would have been incorrect. Uh, but then uh, they're out of challenges. So no more worries about them challenging any of your answers from here on out. It's what you know, what you don't. As far as this one, what do you want to do with round two? I will defer. All right. All right. So thank you to Molly and Sam. We're going to drop you guys out there. Um, and we will bring back both the Razor and the Kaiser. Um, we have yeah. one challenge, by the way. Uh, Count Dicky Doku got it wrong. No, dude. Uh, no, you didn't want the No, because we got we, we were given back a challenge. Yeah, and then you we, lost it. How's no, that? No, no, I, have, I have three. I used two. You challenges? You only have one challenge. Yeah. Not in a Star about? Wars match. I'm using uh, Jedi Mind Tricks on you. <laughs> you, re you realize what the, the idiocy that you were talking about halfway through that statement. All right. So I'm going to give you 60 seconds to talk to your competitor. Go. Wit. Yeah, guys. You're in the dungeon now. You're not in some flop house faction. So you need to go out there and cut this lady down. She's got right. good knowledge, but she's not you. She hasn't been watching this these movies for decades. Let's go. Go with wisdom. Go with your heart. Take a breath. This is your game. All right. Got it. All right. So let's now bring that wheel up. Here is the wheel. Here's the spin. Here it is. And here we go, round and round. Chris Barnes, UK, that was definitely an intentional pun for Maui's game. Last Jedi. Last Jedi. Are you going to stick with The Last Jedi? You're going to spin away again. 60 seconds to discuss it here, starting now. Um, uh, I'll spin again, just to see if I get some. Yeah, spin again. All right. Call, good call, good call. Here we go. Takes the spin. This is it. Whatever it is here, we're going to bring Molly back. That's and right. No opponents, no spinner's choice lurking on the wheel today, and it looks like it's going to be Revenge of the Sith. All right, Revenge of the Sith. We're going to drop Kaiser out. We're going to bring Molly back. Um, okay, so again, please, Molly and Adam, make sure that you have your hands visible during this entire round, please. Thank you. As we ask the questions, there's going to be five questions in the realm of Revenge of the Sith for uh, Adam Witt here. Remember, Molly can steal in this round should she have the opportunity. All right, Adam, are you ready? I'm ready. 
Here you go. In Revenge of the Sith, how many times did Obi-Wan say Anakin had actually saved his life? As there was one instance that he didn't count. Nine. Correct. Two points. All right. Question two. How does Mace Windu disarm Palpatine during their duel? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. First one. How does Mace Windu disarm Palpatine during their duel? Multiple choice. Did A, a force push. B, a punch to the gut. C, he shatters Palpatine's lightsaber. Or D, a kick to the face. Force push? That's incorrect, Molly. The choices are A, force push, B, punch to the gut, C, he shatters Palpatine's lightsaber, or D, kick to the face. Shatters his lightsaber? Looking for kick to the face. <laughs> kick to the face was the answer. Kick to the face. All right. So here is question number three. In Revenge of the Sith, what did Obi-Wan say to Anakin that he was not brave enough for? Politics. For two more points. That's correct. All right. Here you go. Which Jedi was seen killed on Felucia during Order 66? Ayala Secura for two points. Adam Witt, who so far, that is question number four. That was four. So we've got a four point lead over Damon right now, Christian. That is right. All right, here's your final question. In Anakin's conversation with Yoda, what does Yoda tell him leads to jealousy, the shadow of greed? Five, four, three. Multiple choice. Is it A, fear, B, anger, C, love, D, attachment? Attachment. For one point. All right. So we see ourselves there as Adam now hits that. Well, she sees himself with a five point lead. It is now 14 to nine. So Molly Damon now will have her opportunity to just throw Adam Witt out in the uh, waiting room as we bring back Sam Levine, who will have 60 seconds to talk to his competitor now. All right. You know what you got to do? Only a five-point deficit. If you need multiple, don't be afraid to go for it. Much less of a gap to close. So you got this. Feeling good. All right. Here we go. So bring the wheel up. Oh, hey, 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 me. All right. The there we go. <laughs> Uh, cool. And now we go with the spin. Here we go. Oh, man. Video Drew throwing that pizza emoji up, making me hungry, Christian. Yeah, I could go for some pizza. All right, here is the spin. Oh, mixed bag, I believe it is. It's mixed bag. Uh, Respin. Respin. Here it is. Seems like Molly won't know what she's walking into here, Kat. If it's mixed bag, do you throw Star Trek questions in there just to keep them on their toes? Yeah, uh, sometimes on the weekend at Bernie's. And space balls. Uh, Revenge of the Sith we had already, so it'll be one more spin for Molly Dean. What is the combination to Dark Helmet's luggage? One, two, three, four, five. Actually, no, it's President Scroob's luggage. Solo. 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 All right. So Molly Damon has solo. All right, Sam, we're going to drop you out there. Bring back Adam Witt uh, in a moment here. And here we go. All right. So five questions, Mark, for solo Star Wars story for Molly Damon. That's right, Molly. Five questions in the world of solo a Star Wars story brought to you by Denny's. Your first a five question worth two points, unless you need multiple choice. 
What is the name of the precious hyperdrive fuel that Han continues trying to smuggle throughout the film? Coaxium. It is, and it is a pretty penny to get some of that. Two points for Molly. All right. Next question. All right. Next up. What does Han tell Lando his father did for a living? Multiple choice. I can provide that for one point. Is it A, he was an Imperial officer? B, he was a smuggler? C, he worked in a CEC plant? D, he was a navigator on a spice freighter? C. Yes, it is. Carillion Engineering Corporation. Good pension with them. All right. So now we have question number three. That is right, and this could be for the tie if Molly's able to get it right off the bat. Molly, who kills Dryden Voss at the end of the film? Five. Oh, I'm blanking. Multiple choice. <laughs> okay. Is it A, Han, B, Beckett? C, Kira, or D, Chewie? Kira. For one point, and Molly is within one of Wit's lead with two questions left in round number two. Molly, here we go with your penultimate question in Solo, A Star Wars Story. Warwick Davis reprises his role as what character from The Phantom Menace in Solo? Weasel. Wow. Two points, and we have a new leader atop the board, Christian. That is Molly Damon. Now defeating Adam Witt by a point, but we still have one question remaining. Steel still in play. Molly, last question before we get to round three. On what planet do Han and crew attempt a rare, a rail crawler conveyor transport robbery for Coaxium? Vandor. Almost got that out clean. Yes, it is for two points. And Christian, it is now a three-point game in favor of Molly Damon as we go into round number three. It was a big round there. Big round, 17-14. Both competitors using multiple choice, fighting tough. Molly keeping that lead as she makes it into round number three. But Adam Witt not making it easy here as we see ourselves 17-14. Uh, Molly Damon has the lead. All right, Mark, so we get to round number three. How's that go? Match has already seen my reputation as a one-take wonder felled. Now let's see who falls in round number three. Is it Molly? Is it Adam? Round number three, each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from one to 20. Each number corresponds to a different corner of Star Wars movie trivia schmodown know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one, should we need it, is worth five big points. Uh, Molly, since you currently have a three-point lead. You're going to give us your three preferred numbers from one to 21st, and then we'll get Adam's choices, which cannot be the same as Molly's. Okay, I'll go with 17, 1, and 9. 17, 1, and 9 for Molly and Adam. Uh, 19, 7, and 2. Oh, did she take 7? No, she took okay, 17. 7 and 2. All right, 19, 7, and 2 for Adam Witt. And 7, all right, so we're going to bring back the managers here. So, so when the managers will be back here, we're going to let um, Sam can speak to, his, to Molly first for 60 seconds. Sam, go ahead. Uh, Molly, you absolutely crushed it. You played perfect strategy in round two, utilizing the much smaller points gap. You made all of those multiple choices work for you. You didn't miss anything. I'm so proud of you. Right now you have a three point lead, which is great because Adam is gonna have to answer two of his three questions to regain the lead. So that puts you in a really good spot. I feel very good. I know you do, hang in there. Thank all you. right, thank you, Sam. And uh, Kaiser, you have 60 seconds starting now. Wait, you take your time, man. You take a breath. This is yours. The good news is, if Molly loses, she still gets a puppy out of this. Obviously, Sam, you know, is probably going to drop by and, with a gift bag or something. You're either going to walk home a winner or a loser. So I want to see you do this for the dungeon, baby. You got this. All right. Thank you to both Kaiser and Sam. Uh, appreciate it there. Again, guys, same thing. Make sure hands are up um, during this round. Sam is correct. 
Adam Witt will start here. Adam chose category 19 for his first question here. Category 19. All right, Adam. Excuse me. You chose creatures and aliens for your first one. Okay. Here you go. Here is your first question. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here you go. For the trials. What species is Sebulba? A Doug. Two points. <laughs> a Doug? Yeah, he's a Doug, yeah. Uh, <laughs> two points. All right, so now this you have to Carl. Now you got to hit your three-pointer. And here is the question. It goes category seven. Category seven is the Force Awakens. All right, here you go. Captain Phasma orders Finn to submit his blaster for what? Inspection. It's correct. Three points. Big pull there for Adam Witt as he finds himself now. 19, 17. He has a lead mark. Now it bounces back to Molly Damon who has to hit her two-pointer in order to tie the game. Um, she chose category 17. She did, Christian, and that corresponds to episode two, Attack of the Clones, and Molly Damon for the tie. Early in her round number three. Molly, what deceased Jedi master was revealed to have secretly ordered the creation of the clone army? sifo Dias. Uh, we, we're tied, Christian. That is correct. We are tied, and Molly will have an opportunity to hit her three-pointer and retake the lead here, Mark. She chose uh, category number one for uh, the potential lead. All right. For a three-point lead, Molly, that's what's on the table currently. Your three-point question is in the category of, who said it? Star Wars quotes. And your query therein. What villain said, I grow tired of asking this, so it will be the last time? Five. Repeat. Four. First one. In the category of who said it, what villain said, I grow tired of asking this, so it will be the last time? Five, four. Vader. That is incorrect. It was actually Grand Moff Tarkin looking for the rebel base with that quote. All right. So with that, we're going to now bounce to Adam Witt, who will get an opportunity to hit his five and take the lead here should he hit this question. Uh, he chose category number two, Adam. Category number two, the Phantom Menace. Back to Phantom Menace. There we go. Who is introduced as a two-time winner of the Bunta Eve Classic before the race begins? Five. Four. All right, here is your second one. All right. Who is introduced as a two-time winner of the Bunta Eve Classic before the race begins? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. All right, here is your last one. All right. Who is introduced as a two-time winner of the Bunta Eve Classic before the race begins. Team Topagalis? It's incorrect. Looking for Bowles Ruhr. Bowles Ruhr. All right. So Molly now has the opportunity to win the game. Should she hit this? If she misses, we're in another sudden death, my friend. So, <laughs> Used to that. All right, so Molly Damon for her last one has category number 
nine. That's right, Christian. And nine corresponds to the wild, wacky, scary world of Star Wars villains. Villains is your category, Molly, and for five points and the win to advance in the tournament, your question is, before becoming Darth Tyrannus, Dooku left the Jedi Order and reclaimed his birthright of Count for which planet? Sereno. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Magic Molly Damon. Molly Damon hits the big shot at the end, takes us out. What a shot there as she hits it. Oh my goodness, what a shot by Damon hitting the big five pointer. Nails it, and Mark, we see the advancement. We're getting Damon versus Demolanta. Uh, oh my goodness, but man, what a match it was. Wit scrapping to the very end. Molly, Damon, I thought we were going to sudden death. I thought we were going to sudden death, but we're not. Uh, wow, all right, look, so I'm going to uh, just for the moment put Kaiser and Wit in the waiting room. We'll bring you guys in in just a second. Sam, I know you had no idea if that was right. Because uh, and, and so as you're watching on the side yeah. there and you hear her shout that out, yeah. it, it's got to be it's that feel. I saw you. I mean, it was it was just oh. an amazing pull. Yeah. Oh, I was I was going to challenge if you'd mark it wrong on on nothing. I would have just challenged the challenge <laughs> at that point. <laughs> what do we have left to lose? But that was look. I I am so proud of Molly, not just for this match, but all the work that she has put in, what she accomplished today, what I know she knows is ahead of her, and I know she's going to be as much of a beast in every other match. Now she's tasted the victory, Christian. She knows how sweet it is. Oh, it's you got, once you get it in there, Christian. I know. Oh, yeah. Well, Molly, let's talk go, about Molly. that. You played like a veteran. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. Feels yeah. pretty good. <laughs> well, so that, well, that's the thing. So, Molly, so Look, this is a lot different than the first match. And correct me if I'm wrong. I, I feel in the first match, when you missed a couple, you let it get to you. And and it seemed like he was like, and then even before when you said, oh, I blanked. And this time, it seemed like you didn't let that overtake you. You just, you shook it off and you played. Is that what happened? It seemed like that happened. And how did you pull that last question? Honestly, I can't even remember that last the answer to the last question in the movie. I know it from Clone Wars, but um, yeah, I, my first match was live, and I completely forgot I could do multiple choice uh, on one of my uh, questions. So yeah, I think at some point in that match. Also, I just didn't really study as much, but yeah, I I studied hard for this one, and I'm feeling pretty good. Well, we can expect the study to kick into high gear now. So, Sam, Molly, uh, whoever wants to take this question can. You, you, now you know what's looking uh, in front of you, and that is who we just saw in the previous match, potentially. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are your feelings? Is it time to start prepping for your next match, or is it time to rest? Do we celebrate a little bit? What's the strategy here? I'm going to take a break. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start drinking pretty heavily. Um <laughs> I don't know what you guys think. We don't have to play the match right now, so it's time to celebrate, then we go back to work. Yes. Unbelievable. So, Sam, this is a massive, massive victory here for you guys because now we see ourselves, as we talked about before, the usual suspects now, seven points. You're out of the cellar. You're way out of the cellar. You're now in number four um, behind Swag, the Den, and the Finstock Exchange. You're looking up there. Inner Geekdom wow. right around the corner. Yeah, look at that. Highest <laughs> amount of points with fewest amount of matches. That's got to be a record. You got to be feeling good about that. You got to be feeling good about that going in. And now you have these IG matches. You have this. Uh, and now this match, though. I mean, did you guys get an opportunity to watch the match that just happened between Demolanta and Scrimshaw, Sam? Uh, I I did. Um, and, uh, that's, uh, I'm thrilled that I did because, um, I, I, that's why I felt very confident in our challenge of the thousand years. Um, and I mean, I, I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I feel like anytime a challenge gets made and it maybe goes against you, even the strongest player can get a little rattled. Uh, agreed. And now we have, so Molly, you are playing Demolanta. It is going to be a, a, a match that there, there's been talk of the Demolanta Damon match for a while, but uh, now it is Demolanta Molly Damon here. Do you are, are you excited about it? How do you feel? 
I did not watch the match. Okay. Um, I was just kind of chilling out before this. Uh, so I, I'm going to go watch that match now <laughs> after this. Uh, but I feel really good, honestly. Well, you you earned it. It was a great match. We're going to bring you guys in in just a little bit. Here's how it sizes up right now. Molly Damon faces Andrew Dimolanta. That will happen on the 24th of June. Laura Kelly will await the winner of Ken Napsok versus Andres Ace Cabrera. That happens next week. Uh, Sam, former member in Ken Napsok there, do you think that Ken's going to be battling through here? Or who, who do you expect? I know you expect Molly to make the finals. We know that. Who do you expect mm-hmm. uh, Molly to play in the finals? If she's uh, not playing Ken, then uh, something's, something went wrong. Fair enough. We're bringing back Kaiser, Adam Witt. Guys, listen, Adam, you've proven it once again, though, man. You sat there, you scrapped, you had a battle. And did you know that planet question at the end there, the five-pointer? No, that was a Dolce Dauphine-sized question. I I, I, I thought, oh, that's – there's t- I, Never even heard that term or found it in any of the books or anything like that. That's you were going, Clone Wars makes sense. There's a, there's a lot of deficits in my Clone Wars. I, you thought you were going to uh, sudden death. Yeah, yeah, that was very exciting. It's not now. <laughs> Fair enough, uh, Kaiser. Look, it's got to be disappointing. Obviously, you guys are in last place um, at the moment. However, that's Parker, just paperwork. I don't pay attention to Excel spreadsheets. We'll see, we'll see where I finish. Parker hasn't played. Um, Zipper hasn't played. So those are matches coming up around the corner. But you got to be proud of the way that the the Razor played here today against uh, Molly Damon. This is a game that comes down to five point questions often, especially when you've got two giants playing each other. And that's what we saw today. They traded blows. It came down to a five and and she got it. Obviously, she's she's training hard with her, you know, with, with the husband and everything. And I'm sure, you know, she might she, she's going to do good in this tournament. I got a feeling she's going to play well. Uh, that said, I don't think Sam has proved anything as a manager. All he's proved is that he, he, he know, knew how to make a good trade. I'll give him that. Other than that, that's all on her. He didn't really do anything for her. Uh, you know, Wit is going to is going to thank God now we can stop watching Star Wars movies, at least the ones pre George Lucas and Larry Kazdan and can go watch Star Wars movies for fun and get this guy ready for a team's tournament later in the year, maybe singles. You know, Wit Wit is a very talented man. He can play in mul- multiple divisions. And hey, it's a loss today, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be a win down the road for him somewhere on uh, somewhere else. You know, so. Well, That's the question for Adam is, is, is where do you go from here mentally? Uh, what do you start preparing for? What are you in the schmodown? What are you kind of tilting your tractor beam towards, as it were? Well, I, I, I hear there's a singles tournament coming up. I'd love to get uh, into singles because, you know, this is I've been, you know, when you when you study, you, you study, you're watching movies and you're kind of noting all the you're watching with the schmodown goggles so that, you know, and so now watching Star Wars with the schmodown goggles, I'm like, I'm kind of excited to get back to other movies and stuff to just go, oh, and, and things I think will pop out more. It's, you know, it's it's good training for Schmodown in general, this studying for Star Wars. I just like Star Wars more than almost everything. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to have you in here, man. And I know, I, know, I mean, speaking I off of it, we've, we've talked many times about, in general, that um, how you've been, you and when you and Paul kind of came into this league together and how passionate you guys are about it and how much energy and um, and that you've given to it. And I know that you want to do more and I think that we'll see a lot more of you. So thank you for joining us here today. You know, one last thing I'd like to add. I don't think anybody's pointed out that Harloff, you kind of look like the manager of a strip joint on Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect time for that button, Christian. I, I I just have one last thing to see. I just uh, I'm not going to challenge now, but just a replay because I swore I heard someone go <coughs> and say the answer in the background. So I just just checked that on there, but I'm not accusing anybody of cheating. But I, I swear I just heard a you know maybe an Alex David going <coughs> in the background. Give me yeah, I'm gonna well considering she has those headphones on plugged in too. Uh, very very uh, guaranteed probably not going to be able to even hear what the hell we were saying in the first place. The old cough technique. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Adam. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. So if Adam and Kaiser, Kaiser, please just get the hell out of my life. Congratulations, Sam Levine. Congratulations, Molly. Big, big victory here for the usual suspects. Uh, I, needed, I needed win, but Sam called it. Molly stayed, as the, the patron said, cool, calm, and collected. Hits a big five-pointer, and we see ourselves with a Damon versus Dimolanta 
match coming up. So, Molly, Sam, congrats, guys. We'll see you in uh, the next round. Thanks. All right. Thanks very much, fellas. All right. Mark, it was a hell of a doubleheader, my friend. It was. We did it. We figured out a way to do it, but we did it. That's right. I, I might need to give the Damons a call next time I'm in their neck of the woods because I don't have anything like what Molly just opened uh, in my fridge. And now I'm insanely jealous. But uh, hats off to her. She's she's uh, drinking the, the fizziest, best of champagne there is. And Andrew Demolanta, what a match we're going to have, Christian. And maybe everybody else watching this match that's in the Schmodown learned how to use a challenge or two, learned how to make a study maneuver or two. But I think most of all, and I know I speak for you when I say this, just so impressed at the wealth of knowledge that was on display here. Amazing commitment to the craft of preparing for a match that we just witnessed from all four competitors, but in particular, your winners, Molly and Andrew. It was a great match, and it was really good, and Adam uh, fought his heart out, and Molly stayed in the pocket and and played um, and won the match. And having someone like a Sam Levine to tell you that, she didn't have that at Celebration. She didn't have someone. You can tell the way that he was just, they were having their conversation in between rounds. He said, we've been this, we talked about this. Use your multiple choice. Take your time. Um, You got this. It's okay. He used this challenge. He's got to do this. I mean, he was talking to her in a way of somebody who's been playing this game for a long time. So when you have that, it, it settles you. And she certainly showed that because now if we can see the bracket one more time, if possible, I'd like to show it up. Here it is. Molly Damon faces Andrew DeMolanta. That's going to be on the 24th. But first, we have to have the match between. Former co-host Ken Napsok and Andres Ace Cabrera. They go up against each other next week. Then we will see the Molly Damon versus Demolanta match. And then on July 1st, Laura Kelly will play the winner of Ken Napsok versus Andres Cabrera. And then on July 8th, the finals will happen. The finals will happen. It, we will find out exactly who will win and who will face Alex Damon for the championship and pick up more points for their faction. Mark, great tournament. Hey, it's going to be a lot of fun next week when we see Force Center go against the meaning of, hey, subscribe to uh, First Cut. Now, look, when you look at the landscape going forward, it's been so nice to step into this larger world of Twitch. And just a friendly reminder, everybody out there, if you're new to Twitch, relatively so like I am, you can join Twitch Prime. If you uh, have Amazon Prime, then you get a free month, but just go subscribe uh, to there right now and you get like free in-game stuff free games on top of that it's a lot of goodies and you can also of course hang out with us here at the movie trivia schmodown if you're new to the schmodown we're all over the place you can go join our fan group on facebook obviously you can follow us and subscribe on youtube twitter all that good stuff and christian our Patreon is going as strong as it ever has. If you're at the $10 and above tier, then you're going to get to hang out and maybe ask us a question after a match and a whole lot of other bonus goodies. So with all of that being said, everybody out there watching, we're going to go raid somebody, and it's one of our friends, Kind of Funny Games. So everybody go raid Kind of Funny Games after Christian closes up shop. Pressure's on you now, bud. Thanks a lot to everybody. Thanks to Mark Ellis, to our wonderful team here at uh, Skybound. And in general, thanks to Ben Goddard, Courtney Luby, uh, Brian Mitchell, Kim, Michael, everybody. Thank you guys so much, Eric, obviously. And if I forgot anybody, I'll thank you on the next one. So thank you very much for everything that you guys have been with us. We're excited about this tournament. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. And uh, let's uh, let's let's do this again sometime. Yeah, let's do it again. I kind of like your company. We'll see you all. And in the meantime, may the force be with you all. Oh, wait, that's the... No, it's fine. Peace out.